Is Donald Trump a narcissist? Well, that's a question that's been asked by really everyone under the sun and been discussed for basically 10 years at this point. Those who like him say, no, he's not a narcissist, or they recognize maybe he's got some character flaws. Those who don't like him, oh, of course he's a narcissist. And every uh, armchair psychologist around the world uh, projects that he is. So I wanted to take a look today at a psychological assessment of Donald Trump and his narcissism uh, by Jordan Peterson, and then talk about a spiritual angle that I believe might be interesting uh, to couple with this discussion. Take a look at Jordan Peterson's assessment. I have a suspicion that his very impoliteness is at least in part a mask worn to shield him from the pain that such caring can produce. This would make Trump a man whose gruffness is there to shield himself from the public exposure of his tender heart. There are many men who are like that. Now, I don't know Trump, except from a distance, but I know many people who do. All of them have spoken to me of his hospitable nature in private and of his proclivity to go out of his way for the people around him. This group of witnesses to his character includes people who are seriously not aligned with him politically, by the way. It is also by no means obvious that Trump kisses up and kicks down. That tendency is a very damning sign indeed, particularly in someone who has genuine power and is simply not reported of Trump. This is something that appears to stand in marked comparison to Kamala Harris, who is notoriously unpopular among her staff, current and former, and for precisely that reason. Two personality traits remain to assess with regard to the former president, that of neuroticism, the tendency to experience negative emotion and conscientiousness, the tendency to work hard and diligently and to formulate and keep verbal contracts. Neuroticism subdivides into withdrawal, a depression like proclivity to shrink, avoid and freeze in the face of challenge and volatility, a tendency towards what can be an aggressive touchiness. Trump appears to me to be someone who is very difficult to stop. Thus, my suspicion is that he is very low in withdrawal. What may perhaps add to the paradox of his personality, however, is a higher level of volatility. People can and do get under his skin, as Kamala Harris did so effectively in her debate with him. In Minnesota, she went out. Wait a minute. I'm talking now. If you don't mind, please. Does that sound familiar? She went out. He gets reactive, but he won't quit. And he can handle high levels of pressure on a continual basis. His spontaneous response to being nearly assassinated provided clear and stellar evidence of that. What about conscientiousness? Well, Trump famously does not drink or use recreational drugs. So he prioritizes his sobriety and alertness over the transient pleasures of substance use. I can honestly say I never had a beer in my life, okay? Right. It's one of my only good traits. I don't drink. I also cannot see how he could juggle all the activities that he has been involved in, even the ghostwriting aided production of 19 books, not a trivial accomplishment, to say the least of all his other businesses and projects, without a true work ethic. He's up at 5.30 a.m., a sign of the so-called morningness, the preference for early rather than late hours, which is associated temperamentally with both agreeableness and conscientiousness. Night owls tend as well to be more neurotic and to display more symptoms of personality disorder. Trump seems to be active and working, as well as gathering information about the state of things from TV, until about midnight each day. That's a long day of movement. He has a reputation for being a veritable whirlwind of activity in general. A description I find credible, given his strenuous campaign schedule, high openness and extroversion, and early morning preference, all despite his relatively advanced age. On the openness side, I suspect Trump is more interested in ideas than aesthetics. 
that is two aspects into which openness differentiates. He's not an intellectual, nor an artist. So I wouldn't place him in the upper echelons of the distribution of this trait, but no one average or below devotes any attention, for example, to writing books. And the number of books the typical person has written is zero. The diversity of his career is another testament to his trait openness. Trump is clearly a serial entrepreneur type. And he's also very interested in the entertainment world. For better or worse, that gives him commonality with those who inhabit the world of the arts and is part of what makes him a very strange Republican indeed. So why does Trump set so many people on edge? To recapitulate, he is exceptionally extroverted, particularly with regard to the aspect of assertiveness. He's also low in politeness. Now that combination has some overlap with narcissism, not surprising in a figure who has been in the spotlight and strived to be for so many years. However, he is genuinely compassionate, really quite surprisingly so, and appears on the basis of his behavior to be relatively or perhaps even markedly conscientious. The presence of those aspects and traits mitigates against what could otherwise be the dangers associated with narcissism. So it seems that even if there are narcissistic tendency, the dangers of narcissism are mitigated by some of Trump's positive qualities, as, as elaborated upon by Dr. Peterson. I, I actually got into an interesting discussion, I think, with uh, someone recently uh, in our area, in our community. So I was talking to somebody that, uh, and I have, I have friends across the board, across the political spectrum. This person happened to be on the self-defined on the very, very far to the left. And uh, we were talking about Trump's narcissism and his, his clear character flaws that he, that he certainly has. We were talking about the theoretical idea uh, from a spiritual vantage point where is the fact that he has narcissistic tendencies, is that necessarily something that is bad for the country? And so the way I posed it, and the way there's just a thought experiment, the way I posed it was something along the lines of if you have a man that believes himself to be worthy of being on Mount Rushmore as a truly transformative president. Is that, does that mean that he's going to do poorly as president of the United States? Just a thought experiment. And the, the idea is that if a person is, has this sort of uh, feelings of grandeur and really believes himself that he should and could be on Mount Rushmore, wouldn't that in some ways be good for the country? Wouldn't that make this person do the things that are necessary to do to make the country better, to be worthy of being on Mount Rushmore, to be worthy of being placed on the next $5 bill, $10 bill. If someone is a narcissist and motivated for selfish reasons, I'm not using the narcissist, the term narcissist in the clinical, in the clinical term, I'm using it just in the, in the frame of mind of being self-absorbed. If someone is self-absorbed, that doesn't necessarily mean that the job that they're going to do is going to be bad or bad for the country. Uh, maybe perhaps even to the contrary, if he's so motivated by his own self-perpetuation, but because of that is motivated to do a good job for the country so that he can be on Mount Rushmore and he can be placed on the money and all the other uh, theoretical uh, ideas of grandeur that he may desire for himself, wouldn't that be still good and in our favor to support, to be behind, to, to champion. In other words, I'm not saying to vote for him or not. I'm just saying that his narcissistic tendencies, his self-absorption, isn't necessarily going to be something that is bad for the country. If we're thinking about it from the country's perspective, that's not necessarily does his personality features, does that reflect what type of job is going to be done? In addition, I think it's important to note that whenever e each person has a Yetzirah, each person has an evil inclination, a selfish drive that's for their own self-perpetuation, their own self-satisfaction. And the reason that we have that, we, that we have this animal tendency placed within us is really in order to get, get, the, uh, get the gas going in order to be selfless. 
because sometimes a person initially isn't motivated by their self selfless side and pursue good in the objective sense, and they need that selfish aspect to sort of get their get the juices going in order to accomplish selflessness. So, in other words, it's almost as if God instills within us a degree of selfishness in order to accomplish our and bring out our ability for selflessness. If I'm a farmer and I have a field and I'm plowing all of my field by hand, well, that might not that might take me a, quite a long time. But if I harness one of the animals that I have, if I harness the ox, he, he's a wild ox, if I'm able to tame the ox enough that I can utilize his power for the good, well, now I'm going to be able to plow the field and do what needs to be done with the power of the ox. And that's similar to the reason that we have a Yetzir Hara, we have an evil inclination within us at all. God puts us as a, God gives it to us as a power to be utilized in a good direction, to be able to be channeled for something positive. I've spoken over the years to many people in the addiction recovery world who have said that their that their addiction at the end of the day uh, facilitated uh, their own, their own success. They look at it in, in hindsight as a blessing because they took those same addictive or, or obsessive tendencies and channeled it now towards their business or towards their health or towards other areas of life and utilized that, those same tendencies to be uh, extraordinarily successful. Their greatest weakness uh, in, in many occasions became their greatest strength. And so it would work in, in a similar way no matter what sort of tendencies and uh, and wild animal a person has within themselves, that animal can be channeled for good. This was just our little discussion, a little thought experiment. I would be happy to hear what everyone uh, watching thinks of, of this particular idea or as something or has a different uh, way of looking at it. Uh, and if you like this content in general, please feel free to hit that subscribe button there in the corner and would love to stay in touch. Have a wonderful day, everybody.